This broadcast is brought to you by Hometown News Group and the Herald Independent, a production of Monona Community Media, a partnership between the Monona Grove School District and the City of Monona. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going on to youtube.com, searching Monona Community Media, selecting our channel, and clicking subscribe. And listen to us on the radio at 98.7 WVMO, the voice of Monona. Online at mymonona.com. Do, um, to, to some extent, just like you were saying there, I do think that that could be part of it. Um, just, you know, obviously being a part of the program in the past, um, knowing that you, you don't want to show all your cards, you know, too early, um, you know, especially against some of these um, opponents like Ford Atkinson, um, you know, like, like Monroe. Um, you know, I think you can, you are able to win these games just doing you know pretty basic play sheet, um, you know, running the ball. You're obviously mixing in some pass with the spread option, um, but you obviously don't want to show all your cards too much. But certainly, like you were saying, Hep is definitely um, a weapon. There's certainly not any you know defensive back I'm sure um, that I know of that is that is his size. So you throw him some jump balls more more times than not, he's going to go get that. Well, I I teased. Um on social media today that, that you were legendary, Max. Let's talk a little bit about your career here. Um, do you remember what your biggest game was statistically? Um, you know, I, I think it was Monroe. I think it was Monroe it my was, senior year, actually. It was. Four tackles. Now, now, did you see much time on the field aside from special teams? I know you were on kickoff team, correct? Yeah, yeah. I was on kickoff team for two years. Um, I actually, I, I believe, I didn't, I was injured to start my junior year. Um, and I, I went in on kickoff team um, once I got back from injury my junior year against Monroe. Um, so I did play the majority of my junior year and then senior year on kickoff. Um, and then, you know, we obviously did have a number of uh, blowout games as well. Yes. So um, I was able to get a, a receiver and D-back quite a bit as well, um, you know, in mop of duty. <laughs> I have to say one of my memories of that season was, I don't remember who it was against, but it was a kickoff. And you came down and just leveled the guy. And then came over to the sidelines and tore your helmet off and started waving your arms up and down to get the crowd fired up. Uh, <laughs> it was a great moment because we're like, who is that kid? Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. The hit squad is what I don't know if they're still calling it that, but as long as I've been around MG football, the hit squad is uh, that kickoff team, and we like to get fired up for it. That's pretty good. Bob tried to nickname the defense Bashko. I like that. I like that. They, well, they're physical. That's you and him to do. <laughs> He hasn't convinced me yet. He hasn't won me over with Bash Coburn. All right, here come the Silver Eagles, led by Trent Herbert, number two. I like this part. Ethan Boehner, well. number seven. The Silver Eagles have a remarkable record here at home. I haven't tallied it in a while, but it's been some time since we've seen them take a loss here. I don't know if I can think of. I have to go back. I've got you know, game especially well, and especially if you're not counting, you know, obviously playoff games. Right. Um, you know, right. you think back to you know, some of those playoff losses, but regular season losses here, um, you know, it. And the last one, I I, don't, I think the last time was Mount Horeb. Um, the Mount oh, Horeb yes. the year after we won state was the very first game yes. back here. Coach Dassey's last year, uh, Mount Horeb did come in here the first game and uh, knocked the defending state champs off. All right, we're just about ready for the national anthem. We didn't talk you into singing that, did we, Max? Uh, we did not. <laughs> Max's contract has no singing clause, obviously. You're welcome to stand and join us, or kneel, sit, lay on your back, whatever suits you.
Grove Marching Band. Oh. So, the 5 and 0 Silver Eagles against the 0 and 5 Monroe Cheesemakers. Max, feel free to make all the cheese puns you wish. <laughs> we usually go with a shred the cheese theme in That's our promos before the game. That's always a good one. Slice the cheese, cut the cheese. I don't Holds know like if we want to cut cheese. the cheese. <laughs> uh, the booth's a little tight for that. <laughs> if we could open the windows. It's actually a really nice night for football. I it just is. checked this it. Is, this is football weather. 57 degrees, a slight breeze. Um, Monona undefeated. We had a little rain earlier in the evening, or last night it was. Um, I don't think that'll have any impact. The field looks really great. There's been some seasons when it's just torn up something fierce by this time of year. Uh, yeah, I will say this is the nicest the field has looked um, at this point in the season in a while. I, I do remember, you know, all those years growing up playing peewee and, and youth on that yep. field. It, man, by uh, September, October, that thing was dirt. Yeah, the, the weather plays a big role in that, and we got fortune on those wet, sloppy days. We were playing at somebody else's field, so this one remained pretty pristine. There's talk in the referendum passing of getting artificial turf. That'd be pretty sweet. That would be nice. I know, yeah, McFarland just got that. I know. And yep. uh, yeah, they dedicated Wanakee their field last week. Has that as well. That would be uh, that would be nice to get for sure. They've said the the field like that pays for itself in eight years in maintenance costs and it has a 20 year lifespan. So, all right, the Silver Eagles get to receive to start this one off. Had it teed up and it fell off the tee, so Stoughton. Yeah, that could be a problem, and I, they might have to have somebody go over there and hold that. There's a little bit of a breeze. Let's see. Number 20 doing the kicking honors for for the cheesemakers. Anthony oh. Hernandez, a short little pop-up kick right. taken by one of the upbacks, and he kneels down. That was 56. Um, Kendall Come Renard. On. So great field position. I like the discipline. A lot of kids would have been tempted yeah, to take that, off with that, but he made well, a clean catch and knelt down at the 43-yard line. Yeah, for an offensive-defensive lineman to have the uh, awareness to make a fair catch on that, that was, uh, that was a very smart play. I, I don't exactly know what Monroe was going for there. I don't know if that was a squib kick or an onside, but uh, that works out for MG with good field position here to start the game. So Brady Killer Lane in the backfield alongside Jordan Bishop, the quarterback. Brady had a nice game last week against Fort Atkinson. Both sides of the ball, in fact. The snap. Nope, they're gonna Bishop's gonna throw. Looking down the right side. Oh, he's got Hep wide open. There it is. Touchdown. 47 yards to open the game. 57, actually. 57, thank 57 you. 57 yard. There you we were just talking about that pregame there. If they yep. were gonna be taking those shots, the Hep. Um. There's, there's a no math clause in my contract, by the way. <laughs> so, nine seconds into the game, the Silver Eagles up six to nothing. First play of the game. I like a start like that. That is always nice to get off to a start like that. And, you know, th that was a very um, a great play design there. Um, you know, faking that uh, handoff and, you know, also faking that, um, you know, having that jet sweep uh, motion and faking that uh, to the flat. That was a great play design there. This is Oliver Houston, the freshman, going to kick the extra point. Yes, it is. Carter Tom Comchek's done most of the kicking this season. Houston's first kick barely squeaks Ooh, over. Squeeze wasn't in there. pretty. I, the kid's got a stronger leg than that. I'll vouch for him. Yeah, from our angle, I wasn't sure if that went in or not. But but Houston with his first point of the season, making it a seven to nothing MG lead. Eleven fifty two left in the first quarter. All right. Well, we see what. Uh, what sort of approach Beth, what approach Coach Beckwith is taking. I was joking before the game with, with Max and said that uh, last week he took his foot off the gas about the t coin toss. <laughs> this year we got one good play out of him. Yeah. So I wonder if, if Kendall Renard's knelt down up here knowing what was coming in the first play. He, he knew. He knew that big play was coming. You know, and a lot of times that... That play, I'm sure, was you know scripted all week, and and, and things that you see in, in film and on video, um, you know the way Monroe's secondary is playing, you know that shot's going to be there. Okay, back deep for the Cheesemakers. Uh, 24, Nick Bansley. 32, Jordan Montgomery. Number three, Tyler Matley. Yeah. 
Houston after kicking the extra point will get a chance to kick this one off. The three deep backs feature Montgomery in the middle. That was an interesting strategy to kick that one short like they did, and MG took advantage of it right away. Yeah, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I, I would get the strategy for sure, you know, opening the game, you know, being a big underdog and, and trying to get that surprise onside kick kind of right away, but sure. that was kind of just a pooch into the, the second row. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what they were going yeah, for Yeah, it there. didn't bounce or anything. No. Houston's kick. Out of bounds inside the 15-yard line or 20-yard line. So the cheesemakers get a, get a slight edge here by the first MG penalty of the game. He should have been here a couple of weeks ago. The Silver Eagles got whistled for 20 holding call, or 20 penalties, most of them holding calls. Oh my! Was, was that that Oregon game? Yeah, it was okay. clear there was some disconnect between the official officiating <laughs> and the coaching. Oh, well, that can happen. All right. Quarterback Alex Witt will lead him up to the line. Two running backs behind him. Montgomery, one of them, the other I can't make out. 48, I think his number is. Montgomery coming right side. He maybe made the 32-yard line before he was swarmed over. Well, that's definitely what you want to see there from Elena Grove, just to open the game, having that many hats on the ball. Um, yeah. You can't even tell who made the tackle. There were so many guys in there. Yeah, Benny Fluke was in there. Let's give him credit. I like <laughs> Benny Fluke. He's played really well both sides of the ball. All right, Witt will bring him up to the line again. Movement as they shift around. Give it to Montgomery again. Oh, a nice run there as he broke through the first line of defense. That wasn't Montgomery, that was 36, 38. 38, Ethan Kleck, Kleckler. They've had a lot of different guys carry the ball this year. Nobody really consistently that much. I keep looking for Bansley, yeah. like you mentioned. Well, uh, well, that's something that, you know, an offense like this can, can be tough where you have so many guys right behind the quarterback. It's going to be a quick-hitting offense, and, and you really have to trust your keys um, to make sure that, that you're getting to the right spot. Now Witt throwing it out to the left side, incomplete. Just a quick little wide receiver screen that was overthrown. Looking for number 20, uh, Anthony Hernandez. Second and 10. Ball on the 46 yard line of Monroe. 10 51 to play, a 7 0 MG lead is first play from a scrimmage. <coughs> Excuse me, a 57 yard pass to Sam Hepp. Witt straight back to pass. No, he's going to roll out. No, he handed it off. He fooled yeah. me completely. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what I was kind of talking about, Steve, is, you know, th there's so much misdirection in an offense like this. This is, you know, somewhat similar to the offense that we ran, um, you know, when I was back in high school. And, you know, you could have three to four different fakes in a play before you really find out who has the ball. Hey, speaking of back in the day, um, happy birthday to, to a quarterback from my class, Dick Schmitz, who turned 60 yesterday. He's, he's far older than I am. <laughs> he's Bob's age. Third down. The handoff to the tailback. And they're saying Hunter with the carry, I believe. Kunder, 27. See, they rotate a lot of guys in there yep. running back, and it's going to bring up fourth and about three yards to go. The ball at the 47-yard line of Monona Grove. Monroe in four down territory. I suppose they got to take a it, shot. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is. I mean, I hate to say this already, but this is a big possession here for Monroe. If they can get this, they're in, they're in pretty good shape here. Defensive backfield all close to the line of scrimmage as they expect to run, and run it is. Oh, and they stopped him. In fact, they pushed him backwards. Trent Gothard who, got in there. I missed who, who made the tackle there, but. I saw Trent Gothard really get through the line nice there, and, you know, interesting you know, when you do have an offense like Monroe's there and you're kind of caught in fourth and five or so, that it is tough to run a play like just a, a fullback dive to get five yards. That's going to be tough against the Monona Grove defense. Yeah, they're going to have problems if, if they can't do better than that. All right, Silver Eagles take over first and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Let's see, Hep's on the far side. They're going to watch him a little closer, I imagine. Corner's playing really off here. Watch yeah, this for some kind of, I would watch for a bubble Cameron. screen here. This is Benke? No, this is Chad or Reuter. They swing it out. They're looking for 45. That's the 
tight end, Dante McConley. Threw it over his outstretched grasp and bring up second and 10. Yeah, as long as those corners you know, are playing, you look at their, their depth. I mean, they're playing off the receivers almost 10 yards. Um, so you're going to see a lot of quick screens, a lot of bubble screens, um, trying to make them respect that short game as well. Bishop calling the signals. He'll give it to Killerling. Killerling quickly through the hole, down to the 45-yard line, across the 40, and a first down for the Silver Eagles. Killerling, just a quick little hitter, isn't he? Great, yeah, great, great run there. And, and, and like you said, I mean, with all these different running backs that MG is able to throw out there, they all kind of have their own distinct running style. First and 10 at the, let's see, 39-yard line. Bishop calling the signals. Swinging it out left side to Spalding. Spalding inside the 30 and 35 and stops short of the 30 yard line. Inbounds, the clock leaps running. We're under nine minutes to play in the first quarter and the Silver Eagles threatening again as it's second and about four from the 32 yard line. Bishop taking the snap, hand off to Killerlane right up the middle again. Boy, he hits that hole fast inside the 25-yard line. He, he does. You know, the, the, this his running style. You know, who it reminds me of a little bit is Jackson Thompson. Ah, um, yeah. He hits that hole very hard, very quick. He, you know, he's not an overly big guy. He's not gonna, you know, make a ton of moves in the hole, but he's just gonna hit it hard and he's gonna make sure he gets that three to four yards for sure. Listed at 5'10", 172. I think he's even a little bigger than Jackson was. Mm -hmm. First and 10 for the Silver Eagles. Bishop looking to throw, goes right side, little screen pass. This is Spalding, has the first down and a little more down inside the 10 yard line. Spalding's a good possession receiver. He is. First and, and goal at the nine. Again, you're gonna continue to see, especially as you get closer to the goal line. I'm surprised these Monroe corners are not up, you know, pressing a little bit more. I understand you don't want to get beat after you know, that last possession, but they're gonna keep throwing those quick screens if they're not up in there pressing. First and goal from the nine. Bishop, give it to Killer Lane. Killer Lane trying to go right side, aiming for the pylon. It's going to be a little short. Call it a four yard pickup. First and goal, or second and goal from the five. That's close to the goal line here. I would expect to see another run, and possibly with Bishop. Uh, Bishop wouldn't surprise me. Fake it to Killer Lane and then do a little quarterback draw. Yep. Bishop calling the signals. Killer Lane coming up left side. And in standing for the touchdown. Second score of the night for the Silver Eagles with 7.35 to play in the first quarter. Great drive there by, by Monona Grove. A good, good mix of run and pass. Uh, you know, hitting those quick screens, making them respect that run too. That is going to continue to, if they want to take shots, it's going to be able to open up things. And this puts Monroe in kind of an enviable, unenviable hole as they're not a quick scoring team. They're a grinded out bunch and Houston's extra point attempt is good and it's a 14 to nothing MG lead. But to continue my point, Monroe's not a quick strike team. They've got to maintain control if they're going to beat anybody and they're already in a two score hole right here. Yeah, and, and you know, being a team like Monroe, I, I, I got to imagine you have to stick to your game plan to try to run your stuff. Um, you know, you obviously, you know, are trying to win. You are trying to win the game, but they're not going to try to all of a sudden change their identity here and start trying to trying to fling it around. They're gonna they're gonna stick to their game plan and you know, um, you know, kind of see how that goes because ultimately they are still trying to you know just keep continue to build on things and you know hopefully you know by the end of the season for Monroe they're able to pull some things together. Well, aside from being a star on the 2013 championship team, you know why else you're famous? <laughs> Oh, why is that? You are the snappiest student team manager I've ever seen. <laughs> well, thank you. I uh, you, you certainly had a lot of fun with that, and I, I do enjoy sharp dressing up. suits. <laughs> Anybody who had seen Max do a girls basketball game when he was in school remembered him because he was the one guy who dressed better than the coach did. I tried not to outdress Eric uh, too much, but... <clears throat> All right, Oscar, Oscar, 
Oliver Houston ready to kick it off. His name should be Oscar. <laughs> Kickers should have a name like Oscar, don't you think so? That would be a good name for a kicker. All right, Oliver Houston ready to kick it off. His second extra point of the season in the books. Kick down the middle. This is Montgomery at the push back inside the tent. Dropped the ball. Picked it up. Almost went down on one knee and stopped short of the 15-yard line. Good coverage. Helped out by a bad decision by Montgomery. A much better kick there by uh, Houston. And yeah, he, he misplayed that right Dorn. off the kick. Um, you look like her. I'm sorry. You know, as a kick returner, you obviously don't oh. want to have to turn around and catch it over your head like a baseball. That no. certainly is not how you want to do that. All right, 7.28 to play in the first quarter, a 14 to nothing MG lead. Monroe with their second possession. First and 10 from their own 12-yard line. Quarterback Witt calling the signals. Handoff going right or left side. He was snowed under. I think whoever that was lost yards. That was 24. Nick Bansley, your boy Bansley, 5'9", 147, junior. 147 is kind of light for a running back. It is. I'm sure he's quick. Second and 11 after the one yard loss. All sorts of shifting two wide outs to the near side here for Monroe. Witt rolling out, pitching to the trailing back and he's hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped. He might have gained half a yard, but Great it's gonna bring up third and 10. Great pursuit to the ball there by Was Highness. That oh, Highness. Yes, yeah, he made that final hit on him. Um, Great pursuit there to the ball. I tell you, the front seven has played exceptional all season. Well, and that's what you look at in a game like this. You know, against a team like Monroe, you know, certainly, you know, their skill players probably, you know, don't match ours. But but where it really matters is down there in the trenches. If you're Monroe, you have to be able to get a push down there to get your your running game going. That's where the game against Stoughton will be interesting because they've got such a big offensive line. Witt rolling out to his left side, hit in the backfield and gets the ball away, incomplete as he throws it. Almost into the hands of a Silver Eagle. Late flag there. I'm not sure exactly what that, that is for. That's from the near side official, and the play yeah. was, was going towards the far side. Gronsky was able to get some good pressure on there. See what we get here. We've had some interesting refereeing this year. It does appear it is on Monroe. Illegal man downfield okay. against the Cheesemakers. That's all right. That'll bring up fourth and long, and P.J. Spaulding will go back to return the kick. Let's see, doing the punting honors. I think it is Hernandez. Yes, it is, standing at his own goal line. So it was a scary spot. Silver Eagles having blocked an extra, or a few punt earlier this season for a touchdown. Yeah, that Edgewood game, everything went wrong for Edgewood that night. It a did. low kick. Spalding chased back. Nice bounce there. He's going to play it and pick it up near his own 35-yard line. Hit up field 40, 45. Cuts back to the right side. And brought down about the 46-yard line where it'll be first and 10 MG. That's kind of a dangerous one to be running alongside the ball and try to grab it. Yeah, I mean... It worked. You know, all, all, all things considered there from Monroe, you got to be pretty happy that they were able to get a good bounce there and, you know, force Monona Grove to start in their Oh, yeah, that was a 45-yard net. Great, they'll, they'll take great bounce that, I'm there. sure. Yep. So the ball at the 47-yard line of Monona Grove, first and 10, 5.51 to play in the first quarter, 14 to nothing, MG on top. Steve Martinelli alongside Max Etheridge. Looks like Duncan back there, a tailback. I believe you are correct, sir. Man in motion, Bishop takes the snap. They give us to Duncan, across the 50 yard line. Shane Duncan, another one of those guys who hits the hole fast. They're just beating him, beating him to the line of scrimmage with the ball. You know, they're, the backs are so much faster, they're not the, the linemen aren't doing anything but yep. getting in the way. They don't have to do much blocking, just kind of yep. run a little interference. Now they throw to the right side. Hep again. Hep has enough for the first down. 
Again, you see that run game there setting up that quick play action, quick little timing route there, the HEP. Those corners for Monroe are still playing a good 8 to 10 yards off. And there's not many guys who are going to be able to keep up with a 6-7 Sam HEP. He's just a hard kid to cover. <laughs> Throwing left side now. Is this McConnelly? Yes, it is. Dante McConnelly inside the 40-yard line. They did that play a couple times last week against Fort Atkinson with good success. Nice to see McConnelly with a little, little positive reaction from the crowd here as he gets inside the 30-yard line, first and 10 MG. McConley's a big, strong tight end, 6'2", 205. Well, and that's another great play where you're getting a big tight end out there in the flat, and you're, you, the guys who are going to have to make those tackles for Monroe are your smaller cornerbacks. Bishop's going to throw it again, or wanted to, but got sacked back near the 35-yard line. Bishop has not taken many sacks this year. He's not. I did not exactly see what happened there, who got through there. Um, I, I do notice that Michael Williams Davis is, is back in there. I know he has been out the last few weeks with injury. He is out there at right tackle. Here comes. There's a, oh, this is the tackle against McConnelly. All right, here we go. Second down for the Silver Eagles. Reuter in motion. They give it to him on the jet sweep. Right side has the first down. Cuts it back down inside the 25-yard line. First and 10 MG. The one of the no, I take that back. He was a little short. Ah, he must have stepped out of bounds. You know, one of the things that that most people that might not necessarily see is you know, in a quick game like this, where that MG gets those balls out to the flat, the receipt the receivers definitely do have to be able to hold their blocks. That is a big part of this offense. Duncan shifting over to the left of his quarterback, taking the handoff into the line, a little bit of a push, now thrown back. It's going to bring up third down, second down for the Silver Eagles. Third down. TV screen is wrong. Oh, it, oh, I think it is going to be. Oh, they're saying it is going to be fourth. Yep, it is going to be fourth down. Interesting to see the decision here from Monona Grove. It does look like they are going to go for it. Well, too close to punt, too yep. far for a field goal. You may as well. Fourth and about five yards. Bishop throwing over the middle, just beyond the reach of. Of who is that? That was Sam Hep. That was Hep. Okay. That was Hep. It's it's hard to it, it is hard to throw Hep, overthrow Hep, but uh, it was there. That was a great great look there. Just just a little off the mark. Yeah, they had the right idea, and he was open in the end zone. If Bishop yep. had brought that down just a little bit, it was another six for us. So 3:03 to play in the first quarter. Oh, uh, Monroe gets their first stop, so to speak, <laughs> and they take over first and ten from the 23 yard line. Yeah, you do have to be pretty happy with that position if you're Monroe to, to hold you know, Monona Grove to no points there. Yeah, that didn't happen against Fort Atkinson until about the seventh or eighth possession of the game, and it was already out of hand by that point. Witt rolling out. Nobody to pitch to this time, and he's buried at the 25-yard line. <laughs> he's getting up kind of slow. Oh, that wasn't Witt. That was 32. That's uh, That was Montgomery. Montgomery, yeah, their top running back. I think back. they hit him on kind of that quick that quick hitting uh, sweep play. Uh, again, it, it's, you know, I know it's hard for us up here. I'm sure for the players down there, it, it, it is equally as, as hard to be able to find out who has that football um, with so much misdirection, so much motion, all the shifting going on. Well, that's why they teach you things like the defensive ends have to get outside and keep yep. anybody from getting around the corner. You know, if you can do that, it doesn't matter who's got the ball. You just watch for all of them. Now this will run into the line. Oh, he got stood up and pushed back, and the ball comes loose. And the Highness might have it. He's in the pile fighting for it. Boy, no, is no, he that scrapping. Wasn't it's 21. Samaj, if that's 21. Ah, Tij. Samaj Nerudin yes. recovered by the Silver Eagles. Now that's one thing the Silver Eagles haven't done a lot this year is had many takeaways. They've protected the ball fairly well, but I would bet you they're close to even when it comes to takeaways. Well, that's that's great to see to be able to get a you know a, a turnover there, especially after yeah. getting stopped down there. Yep, and now you're taking over right here in in the red zone. All right, first, you start the possession. Yeah, first and ten from the 24. That's a yard off from where the, that drive started for the Cheesemakers. All right, now Killer Lane will come back out. <laughs> I 
Bishop calling the signals. McConley in motion, Bishop looking to throw, goes back to the left side, this is Reuter. Reuter, a little jump move to get inside the 20. Great play design there. That, that play started the same as that last flat pass to McConley. They looked him off, they looked at, you know, Bishop used his eyes to move the defense over there to the right and then coming back to the left with that middle screen. Yeah, that's pretty impressive when you see a high school kid who can sell the look that well. See had everybody going to one side and he came back and threw it the other way. Second down for the Silver Eagles. This time they'll give it to Killer Lane right into the line. He got close to the 15 but stopped a little short. It's going to be third and short for the Silver Eagles. See how much they give him here. Next to nothing. Call it third and four. All right. You can tell. You can bet they're looking for Sam Hep now. He's in the slot on the far side of the field. And they are pressing on him now. Yep. If he can get past that on his release. He's got that safety over the top. There he is. There's the ball. Touchdown. Boy, did we call we that did. one. We did call that oh, one. He was able boy. to get past that press. Um, great play there. Sam Hep is second scorer of the game. A 16-yard pass from Jordan Bishop. And with a minute and 10 left in the first quarter, it's MG 20 pending the extra point attempt. Uh, Monroe nothing. And that's where we're talking, you know. If you're Monroe, you, you kind of have to pick your battles there. Are you going to play off and, and allow some of those quick passes and those curls? Um, you know, when you get up and press, if Hep is able to get by you, he's going to score. Yeah, I was kind of surprised there. They had the safety over the top there, but he did, really didn't come over and pick him up. And Houston's kick makes it a 21 to nothing MG lead. It's still first quarter. It is. Good start here from Monona Grove for sure. What I like is we haven't seen Ostrowski on offense yet. I mean, I love to see Jalen Ostrowski run the ball, but we were able to rest him and, and play some of these other guys who work hard in practice. For sure, and that's where we were talking, you know, where... You know, in a game like this, you don't necessarily need to show all your cards and, you know, you don't necessarily need to play a, a, a guy like Jalen Ostrowski on offense until you really need him. Sorry about that, trying to find the light switch for us. All right, 21 to nothing. Man, this is kind of the start that we were hoping for. We'll see if MG keeps this up or they back off a little bit. Of course, they haven't been doing anything super aggressive. I mean, this is a lot of, except for that 57-yard pass to open the game, this has been some ball control type of passes. It has. It was. It's, it's nice to see them put together a few drives with, with, again, like we were saying, just a good balance of run and pass. Now, Monroe hasn't been the worst defensive team in the conference. We saw them last week, but they do give up 31 points a game. I have to look and see if they've given up 21 in the first quarter of any of their games. This has been a little unique. Houston ready for his third kickoff of the night. Houston ready to kick. Three cheesemakers deep. Line drive kick down the center of the field. Nobody's going to pick it up. The ball's just bouncing at the 20. Now it's picked up and stopped. The, the up back just kind of watched that one go by him. Yeah, chest I, high and... Everybody watched it bouncing around. You know, I think it was 17. Um, I believe it was Trevor Ogden who did get down there. If, if that Monroe player wouldn't have picked that up in about another second, Ogden would have had a chance to, to grab that. Okay, just checking the, the box scores from earlier games. DeForest put up 19 against Monroe in the first quarter. 21 is the, their worst first quarter, first start to a game for them yet this year. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. They give it to the running back, and he doesn't make the line of scrimmage. About a two-yard loss. Benny Fluke at the bottom of the pile. My boy, Benny. <laughs> Montgomery credited for the... Oh, they give him the line of scrimmage. I think that's generous. <laughs> See, that front seven is just great, aren't they? It is. They're it, just and flying you know, to the ball. Usually the unsung heroes of the team, but, but that defensive line is huge. Second and 10 for the Cheesemakers. Witt straight back to pass. Throws it off the right side. Off the hands of his receiver. That one had had an opportunity to get some yards. It did. He had a little separation between him and the defensive back. Who couldn't catch it. Yeah, when you have an offense that, you know, really doesn't have a downfield passing game, 
um, it, it does allow you know a defense like Manaro Grove to really bring in you know nine, ten, eleven guys into the box because um, they aren't really able to threaten you downfield. Yeah, Monroe has thrown coming into the game. Monroe's thrown for only 110 yards all season. I think uh, Bishop might be close to that already in this quarter. I mean, you look here, you got two safeties who are, you know, within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Oh, here's breakaway running back. I think this is Montgomery dragged down by Killer Lane. No, Kleckner. That was Kleckler. Kleckler. Ethan Kleckler on the carry there. Well, the nice run there, 10, 20, 38 yards roughly into Monona Grove territory, their deepest penetration, just to the 44, but Kleckler with a nice run there. But Killer Lane with the ankle tackle to prevent the touchdown. And that is where they that is where they can get you. If you bring in, if you're Monona Grove and you bring in 11 guys in the box there and then a couple guys make a wrong read, um, if they're able to get, if they're able to sneak through that that first line of defense and get up to the second, third level, they can, they can hurt you. Hey Max, try that dial switch next to you there and see if that bright turns some lights on for us. Nope, we're gonna have to find them somewhere at halftime, I suppose. It's getting hard to read my notes <laughs> up here in this dark. All right, 12 fresh minutes on the clock to start the second quarter. The Silver Eagles up 21 to nothing. There we go, the light of the laptop. Oh, and you use Wiss Sports, what a surprise. <laughs> that is a nice I do. site, I, I don't mind giving them a plug. They. They, they've been pretty handy, and they keep improving it, too. Yes, that is definitely the, the place to get your uh, all your stats, scores, and schedules. And, you know, having worked there for, for a good number of, number of years, um, it's a really great operation there. All right, 21 to nothing. Coach Beckwith's got to be happy with this start. Looking ahead next week to the game down in Milton. Max and I will be doing that one as well. Bob suffering or... or Standing through a two-game suspension. <laughs> I'm too polite to say why. All right, Monroe with the ball on the 43-yard line. I believe this is their first time in, in MG territory. Well, they were down there that one other time, I think, actually. But That's true. They can get, yeah. If they can get a good first down here, they, they're they, going to be threatening here into the red zone. Witt dropping back to pass, throwing right side. I think he actually completed a pass. How about that? 88 was that? JT Seagraves, a freshman. Freshman, 6'5". Six five. Five. Wow. Their own version of Sam Hepp. Yep. Now he's coming off the field with his head on crooked. Kleckler in the game along with Montgomery at running back. Kleckler lines up behind the quarterback. Quick a QB sneak there. Yeah, and... They only needed a yard for the first down, and it appears they got it. They haven't had a lot of first downs in this game, but there's another one. That game against Fort Atkinson was spectacular. I mean, nine straight, no, excuse me, ten straight three and outs. I've never seen that. Yeah, well, and that's, I mean, that is incredible, you know. And no matter who you're playing, um, as a defense, those are the kind of things you strive for. You know, we got deep into the fourth quarter before their best running back went into positive yardage, and Bob commented on it. And then on the next play, he lost eight yards. <laughs> Handoff on a jet sweep. Great. Hernandez tackle. dragged down. Nope, Bansley. Dragged down for Killer about Lane. a five yard loss. Great tackle there by Killer Lane. To be able to contain the outside and make the tackle, that is, that is very tough to do. He's got a lot of speed, and he's a strong little guy, too. Little guy, he's bigger than I am, probably. Second and 13, the ball at the 34 yard line. 10.52 to play in the first half and a 21 to nothing MG lead. Oh, I didn't even notice we've got the time on the on the screen now. We do, that, that is, is nice. Slick. We gotta do that for that basketball, time and score. Drives my dad nuts when the <laughs> basketball score is incorrect. Run into the line of scrimmage, didn't get him too much. That was that was Kleckler again. Well, and this is th this is not what where Monroe wants to be. Not having a, a great downfield passing game when you get in third and long here. Now they split the freshman Seagraves out to the far side. He's the kid that's six five. Everybody else in pretty tight. Got Stinson matched up on him. I'd look for that that matchup right now. Bansley in motion. The handoff to the up back. He went ahead for four or five yards, maybe. Now they're going to give him just a three-yard pickup on the play, and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, if you're Monroe here, you you got to figure they're going to throw it here. 
Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line, yeah. 41, 31. Curse these window jams. <laughs> That's going to be the matchup to watch here on fourth and long. Watch Seagraves with Stinson on him. He's at the far side. Isaac Stinson, a nice tall defensive back. Witt's looking for him. There it goes. Batted away. Wow, no, he caught that. Steve, did he, he caught really? that. He caught that ball. How did he that get was that? I thought I saw it flying away. I gotta give with I, a nice catch. I gotta give credit there, the Monroe. What what a great throw and catch there. Yeah, Stinson had him step for step. Great coverage, just uh, even better catch. Wow, and they mark it at the one yard line, so the cheesemakers threatening to get on the board. And Monroe, so Monona Grove has let up, has not has uh, yet to let up a point here in the first half the whole season. Look at the defense swarm. Great penetration. What a push they got. Jeez. I think Gronsky, Sisler was able to get in there as well. That's Montgomery with the attempted carry, I believe. Yeah, Jordan Montgomery, 32. I'm yeah. sure that thought is in the Monona Grove defense's mind right now that, that we are not going to let up a point here. A three-yard loss on the play, second and goal from the four. I'm sure Herber is getting his guys jacked up out there trying to get a big defensive stop yeah. here at the goal line. Matter of pride here with 8.40 yep. to play in the first half. Now Monroe shifting. Witt under center. Give it to the running back. Oh, is there a fumble? He did. And Montgomery Silver fumbled. Oh, Silver wow. Eagles recover. There you go. Second turnover of the half. Huge play. Not only do they get the stop, we get the ball back. Wow. All right, some early scores. Edgewood beating Fort Atkinson in the first half, 13 to nothing. Milton Watertown scoreless. And Oregon beating Stoughton, 14 to nothing. Wow. wow. Wow, that is a big, that is a big score update for sure. Stoughton, I believe, ranked currently sixth in the state in Division Two. That would be a major upset. That would be big, yeah. Oregon's not a bad team. They, they gave MG a hard time. They aren't. I, I would, I would say most people widely consider Oregon to be that that third best team in the Badger, um, the Badger South. That is, and um, of course, that's like being the third prettiest in a beauty contest. <laughs> you know that that. A buck will get you some coffee. 8.26 to play in the first half. The Silver Eagles up 21-0. After that takeaway, they start with the ball at their own one-yard line, first and 10. 14-0, Oregon over Stoughton. Wow. All right, Coach Beckwith talking to his team down here. Let's see what they dial up. Oh, my. Well, it, apparently, they, <laughs> I don't know if they went to the replay booth or what here, um, but it appears the defense is going back out onto the field. I think they must have convened and talked it over and, and ruled that the runner was down. Oh, um, okay. I, I don't know how they, they made they, that change there in the last minute or so, but the defense is back onto the field here. And it is indeed Monroe Ball. First and or second and goal from the five. The handoff into the line again. A little spin move and he gets into the end zone. I think that was Montgomery. See who they I credit believe. that to. That's what I thought. There is a penalty, although I it, it may it may be on Monona Grove. I think they're talking to the quarterback Wit. Oh. What do we get for a signal here? The guy in the white hat says face mask against the Silver Eagles. Yeah, that's what I thought. And what's this? Oh, touchdown. <laughs> All right, so Hernandez will get to attempt the extra point. Now, many fans may be confused with that formation there to start that that extra point. There are a lot of high school and college teams who are using that to, you know, if they ever do decide to go for two, they're able to, to go from that formation. Hernandez bangs through the line drive to make it a 21-7 MG lead. 
Well, that I mean that is you know Steve that that is too bad to see that MG defense you know give up their first their first points of the season there in the first half, but but not not a bad effort to be able to make it through over five games without giving up a single point. No, in the first I half. give them a lot of credit. I would have liked to have seen a shutout. I love shutouts, but uh, everything everything comes to an end. Every streak ends eventually, but still we've got a two touchdown lead and we're getting the ball back and we'll have the our opportunity to go up by three scores again. Now the Silver Eagle offensive or the kick return team gets a rare opportunity. They haven't seen many of those last couple games. They have not, and it'll be interesting to see what Monroe does here. Are they gonna are they gonna kick it off deep, or are they gonna try to do another kind of onside kick? Um, man, if I'm Monroe, I just I kick it deep. I try to try you know, to pin them back. Yeah, because I mean, if you if you think about it, this game and Monona Grove is yet to have to go the length of the field to score. They've been they've been lucky that they've been able to start within you know midfield in. I don't know about you, backs, but I'm looking forward to our cookies at halftime. Thanks I to Dave well. Kirshner, who's back in the stands and Very good made, made up for the cookies. This is going to make Bob jealous. Bob, there's eight cookies in All here. Right. Usually we well, only get six. More for us. Dave's careful to put an even number in there so we don't fight. Oh, that's right. We're yep. taking that penalty for the face mm -hmm. mask. Yep. So now they definitely are going to kick it deep. Yeah, yeah. They're going to kick off from the MG 45-yard line. Hernandez wants a different tee, apparently. Maybe going for a higher tee at this point. You can put more more uh, air under the ball yep. and get a chance for some good coverage. And I don't know what kind of leg he has, but it, it, it could be interesting to see if they try to really, you know, kick it as hard as he can back through the end zone or if he will try to, you know, pin him to, to make us catch it right about the goal line. They could pin us back, you know, within the 20-yard line. All right, Hernandez ready to go. The Silver Eagles ready to return. Spalding and I believe that's Reuter back deep. Oh, they're going to kick a bouncer through the middle wow. of the return team and out that, of bounds. That so that kind of negated the whole <laughs> the whole penalty thing where we're kicking from the wrong side of the field. That that was an interesting decision there by Monroe, and and you could tell that that was what he was going for. That wasn't a miss kick. That wasn't it went off his foot wrong. He was going for that little squib kick. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, and and I, which strikes me is kind of odd because the average high school kicker can probably put it in the end zone from the forty five yard line. Yeah, yeah. That that surprises me a little bit. Uh, that decision there by Monroe. All right. So with eight eleven left, Silver Eagles will take the field, leading twenty one to seven. Now they're marching it back. Yes, soon. and then this is um, this is a rule that they do have in. Um, I believe this this happened in the, in the first or second Badger game, something very similar to this, where there was a 15-yard penalty um, that was to be enforced, and when it goes out of bounds, they still do enforce that. I believe. Oh, they're going to kick off again, apparently. Okay. <laughs> this is confusing. This is. Bob, are you watching this? <laughs> Explain this to us. Call me. Yeah, you know, j just like, you know, those college football and NFL games, they have those referees who are on yeah. standby to be able to talk to them. Bob's our guy, need, huh? Yeah, we need, uh, we need one of those. He's, he's somewhere on vacation watching it on a phone, and I'm sure he could see exactly what happened. Yep, we need our own uh, official here in the booth to be able to talk to us about these calls. All right, Hernandez will tee it up this time from the 50-yard line. Yeah, we'll see what they Oddly. do here. They keep trying until they get it right. going to take forever to get this going. So Reuter and Spalding deep for the Silver Eagles. Hernandez to kick it yet again. Same Another thing. squib kick. Oh my. Out of bounds. It was out of bounds. It will be MG ball, but that was that was very close. That was a much better attempt um, at that kind of onside squib kick that they were going for there. A couple of Monroe players were pretty close to the ball there. All right, the Silver Eagles will have the ball. They must have grabbed it as they are spotting the ball at the 33-yard line, 32-yard line. I'll take it there. 8-10 to play, so a whole second off the clock on that exchange. Took about five minutes. Well, nope. here's our first look at Monona Grove being able to go on a full drive here where they do have to kind of drive the length of the field. 
Bishop, the quarterback, alongside running back Killer Lane. Jet sweep to Reuter, going left side. Has a little running room and down near the 50 yard line, unless he was out of bounds, he had a nice gain on that play. Close to a 20 yard pickup. Again, great run and, and, and downfield, you look at Peyton Spalding, you look at Sam Hepp, continuing to fight 20, 25 yards downfield to get a good block. Now Reuter, who just had that nice run, call it about 18 yards to the 50 yard line. He comes out wide in the slot. Spalding, the nearest wide receiver to us. Bishop calling the signals. We give it to Killer Lane. Off right tackle. Running room. More running room. He's running gone, away he's from gone. it now. 50 yard touchdown for Brady Killer Lane. MG up by three scores again. Killer Lane just continued to accelerate on that he ball. He did. He started to just really pull away. It looked like it was just going to be a run for, you know, six, seven yards, and he really just started to pull away from the defense there. Again, I. I will say, he reminds me of Jackson Thompson a little bit, his running style. Well, two touchdowns for Brady tonight. A five-yarder and now a 50-yarder. Wow, that was pretty impressive. I didn't realize he had that kind of speed. I know he's quick as a linebacker, but he was really literally pulling away from guys back at the 30-yard line even. That will be a gr great weapon for them going forward if they are able to still utilize all those different tailbacks that they have. And, and as you get closer to the playoffs, I, I do imagine you will see Jalen Ostrowski back in, in some role on the offense. But, you know, being, again, like we talked about, being able to get Brady Killerlane some, some critical playing time here and being able to show what he can do, um, that's going to be huge going forward. All right, 28 to 7, the Silver Eagles up. 7.46 to play in the first half. Brady Killerlane with his second score of the night. So Killerlane and Hep have dominated the offense so far, but really it's it's the line on both sides of the ball that's been the, the hero in this one, I'd say. The blocking has been good. The defensive push has been there. It has. It's been a pretty clean game here for Milan Grove so far. That's true. Relatively few penalties. Although you know how it goes now that we've said that. that yep, I know. Now they're going to start piling on. Yeah. Literally, huh? Yes. All right, 7.46 to play in the first half. And a three-touchdown MG lead. Houston getting ready to kick this off. Just a slight breeze from the north tonight. Like we were saying, it's a nice temperature for a game. Most of the games leading up to this point have been kind of warm, and we've had a little problem with cramping. But this is this is ideal football, ideal football weather if you're a football player. Houston ready to kick it. Offsides, little pop up yep. and somebody's offsides. Yeah, yep. that was uh, 56 there. Oh, so they'll pull it back five yards and try kicking it again. On well, Steve, what were we just saying? Been a pretty yep. clean game. Not, and not there's too many the yellow penalties. flag out. That's okay. We're not going to see 31 of them like we saw in that Oregon game. Never seen anything like that. We've had a few few firsts this year, like the 31 penalty game, the zero first down game. <laughs> Those are the kind of penalties you that really will drive a coach crazy, though. I was looking at you know. Uh, Brandon Beckwith down there and uh, th th those will drive you crazy because it, it might not matter as much in a game like this but um, in, in big games those are the penalties that you just can't have Alright Houston will try it again back from another 5 yards this one taken inside the 20 yard line across the 30, 35 and brought down shortly after the 35 yard line That was Tyler Madley, number three, with the return. 36-yard line, first and 10 for the Cheesemakers. 7.36 to play in the first half. Well, Max, this is interesting. I'm curious to see what they're going to do coming out, you know, having scored and then giving up that quick score to the Silver Eagles, how they, how they react to that. Well, and they've started to establish a little bit of a passing game here with uh, with Seagraves. They, they might keep trying to go to him. Yeah, they run it into the line and a little bit of a run there for a yard or two. Brian Hingis credited with the tackle. 
second and eight. And they've had not much success throwing the ball except that that one that uh, Seagraves caught at the one yard line. That yep. was a beauty. I split him to the far side, two receivers to the near side, one or two running backs behind quarterback Witt. Oh, hit at the line there by the linebacker. Missed two. That was, I think it was Boehner yep. making the tackle there. And again, here you got you got third and third and long, and, and and Seagraves back into the game here again. I would watch for that matchup. Third and long, and Seagraves your only weapon now. Stinson will go out and cover him one on one. He's up pressing on him too. Yes, I would expect is. them to go deep to Seagraves. They're looking with throwing it that way over the middle, and this one gets batted away by Stinson. Got both hands out there on that one and knocked it down. So that'll bring up fourth and. Seven. Good they recovery there by Stinson. They almost have to kick it here, though. Yeah, the kicking unit does come on. You can't turn it over this close to the goal line. Spalding back to return the kick from Hernandez. Peyton standing on his own 30-yard line. Now whistles. Timeout, Monroe. 6.24 to play in the first half, a 28-7 MG lead. Well, stay tuned at halftime if you're watching this on YouTube. We've got some, some video to, to, to run for you. It's pretty cool stuff created here by Monona Creative Media, Monona Community Media, excuse me. A um, little different from the stuff that uh, <laughs> the kids used to do when I first started doing this, Max. Back in those days, they were shooting it directly onto videotape, and as soon as the game was done, they'd run downstairs and throw it in the VCR and play it over <laughs> Monona Cable. Yeah, times have definitely changed. Oh, God, yeah, we had no headsets, table mics, <laughs> so when it got really loud and raucous in the game, Bob and I couldn't hear each other. Whether we were in here or in, an, in the gym, it was impossible to hear. Yeah. Which, that's fine. Most of the time, we're just babbling anyways, <laughs> but... All right, now we're ready to punt it. Hernandez ready to take the snap. Good snap. Fairly decent kick. Spaldi comes up and takes it to his own 33-yard line. Goes to his left side across the 35, oh 50. My. Good return. Into, into Monroe territory down near the 35-yard line. So the Silver Eagles starting with that short field again. Probably Spaulding's best kick return of the year. Oh, for sure. I mean, that ended up being a net punt of like negative five yards. Yeah. <laughs> Spaulding also a star on the baseball team. I don't know if you paid attention. They got to play a game at Miller Park. This I did year. see that. Yeah, that was Milton. awesome. That must have been really cool. You were you were down there to call that. Yeah, we got yeah. to do that one. That's awesome. That was fun. I would do that again. I'm sure that sounds like a really great opportunity. I know I think they had to do a lot of fundraising for that. And, yeah. Um, yeah, really cool opportunity for those kids to be able to do that. Bishop calling the signals. To give it to Duncan going left side. No, he's throwing no to the right. Spalding with the catch there. Spalding cuts it back inside. Working hard to get near the end zone, but I feel he was just short. I can't see he it. He is at about the 11-yard line or so. Yep. First and 10. Yep. First and 10 from the 11. Nice pick up there. They had me totally fooled. They sold that handoff to Duncan going to the left side. And, and uh, Bishop came up and made a nice throw to Spalding. Now they're in dangerous territory for the cheesemakers. Bishop dancing around in the pocket looking for some help now. He's going to run to the left. Throws it into the end zone. Ooh. Overthrows his receiver. Tried that jump ball there to help. Good composure there, though, in the pocket by, by Bishop to the, you know, when things start breaking down to still be able to make a good throw there. Jump ball is the right word to use with Hep. I'm sure you saw him play basketball I last did. fall. Oh, that yes. kid can leap, can he? He can. He had some monster dunks last year. He's going to be fun to watch his senior year. All right, second and 10 from the 12-yard line. Monona Grove threatening to go up by yet another score. Bishop, give it to Duncan. Left side. Flag, two flags. Yeah, there's going to be a holding and a pushback, there. Pushback, yeah. Wasn't much of a run, anyways. 
One thing I, I, I'm surprised we haven't seen tonight is Jordan Bishop has yet to carry the ball tonight. Yeah, you're right. Usually he's got a handful of carries mm -hmm. by now. Well, and usually, I, what, what I, I mean, a lot of those are, you know, design quarterback runs with, within this offense. And I am, I am a little surprised to see that, that Bishop is without any carries yet. Yeah, he averages almost seven carries a game. So, yeah, you'd think he'd have a few at least by now. Maybe they're working on different aspects of yep. the game. Right now, this strategy of giving it to Brady Killer Lane is a strong one. I support that. It sure is. I believe Ethan Boehner's in the game now at running back. Yes, he is. Well, he's going to come with a little bit st different style than Killer Lane. I think he's going to be a little bit more downhill, and he, he might try to run somebody over. Yeah, he's a stronger runner. I don't know if he's got Brady's speed, but Ethan is definitely a, a tough guy. 5'11", 170, about the same size, though. Ethan, nope, Bishop throwing for the end zone. Oh, incomplete. You know what happened there, Steve? I don't know if you were able to see because no. of this pull, but but what <laughs> happened there were there were two two receivers within three feet of each other. Oh, uh, so you know you, you wonder if if one of the receivers ran ran the wrong route there, but but there were there were two receivers within three yard uh, three feet of each other, and um, I don't think which neither of them went for the ball because I think the other one thought they were going to get it. And a penalty against the Silver Eagles will march it back and will replay third down. Let's see where we get this thing. We're already at the 23. Oh, the penalty's declined, so that'll bring up fourth down. No, third and 19. It's hard to keep track of the downs with all these penalties. Watch for him to try to draw him off sides here on a hard count. Yeah, Bishop's trying. Ooh, he had one of his own guys jump. Darn it. The left guard. Oh, I think, I think they are going to call that Monroe, though, actually. Oh, they think they crossed into it? Yep. Crossed into the zone. That's nice. Good job by Jordan Bishop. So, third and 14 is a whole lot better. You can do the same play. You don't have nearly as much turf to cover. Bishop and Boehner in the backfield. Yep, they were trying it again there to get him on the hard count. Yep, now they're changing the play. <coughs> well, and I would say this is four down territory here. So if you're in on the Grove, you don't need to get all these yards here at once. Yeah, I would agree with you. Bishop, the pass. Touchdown. Right side, touchdown, Reuter. His first catch, or first touchdown catch of the night. He had the uh, catch from the backup quarterback last week. So the Silver Eagles putting another score up with 5.30 to play in the first half. That one, a, what was that, a 15, 16 yards? Yep, 16. That was, yep. So Jordan Bishop's second, third touchdown pass of the night. Houston's extra point attempt. That was probably his best kick of the night. He's getting practice now with five of them <laughs> in the first half. Makes it a 35 to seven MG lead. Well, that's a great play design there on that touchdown from Monona Grove. You know, you see a lot of those starting to happen now in, in college and, and the NFL, those RPOs where they're able to fake that handoff and those linebackers are definitely, you know, keyed in on that run and that those receivers are able to slip in right behind their zone uh, for the easy touchdown there. It's also great to see this Monona Grove passing game come come alive a little bit as we keep progressing here in the season. Yeah, absolutely. Back in my day, back when the aforementioned Dick Schmitz, who just turned 60 yesterday, was quarterback, all he did really was take the snap and turn and hand it off. He had the best running back in the conference, Tim Olson, at fullback, and then some kid named Stassi playing, playing running back alongside of Olson. Little known fact, my brother Dave was a starter on... on MG as a freshman. Okay. Um, sophomore year, they brought up this kid from the freshman squad to take his place named Stassi. Stassi finished the year on varsity that would have been in my brother's position, or would have been in my brother's position. And it's my brother's birthday today, too. What? This is just oh, wow. <laughs> too much. It's just kismet. All oh. right. Houston teeing it up. Silver Eagles ready to kick off. 5.30 to play. Let's get the ball back and get another score and go up by that 35-point margin. That would be great. Get Bob's that running, type of game. That running clock. 
second half. That's what you want. I like that they're playing this with a variety of players running in there at running back. The depth MG's got at running back is really impressive. Good kick by Houston taken at the 10. This is Wadley again across 15, 20, 30 yard line, 35 yard line. Kick coverage has been a little weak as Wadley gets across the 30 yard line yet again. Just to go back to that point that you had just mentioned, Steve, is you know that that kind of running back by committee here from Winona Grove. You know we've really it's been a long time since since there's been kind of that that committee of running backs. You know yeah. having Jackson Thompson yep. and having Torian Young before that, both kind of those bell cow running backs you can count on for every single carry. But but now having three, four, five different guys can carry the ball. Let me find my notes here. It was several years ago when we had James Connor as the. Yep. The primary running back and Evan Oldenburg getting yep. a significant number of carries. They were a good tandem. Handoff inside, got a couple of yards maybe. Now they give him just a yard on the pickup. Second and nine for the Cheesemakers. But yeah, you're right. It's been a long time since they had, you know, a real running back by committee uh, offense. Yeah, you think back to some of those teams, even from the 2010s with LeBron Roach. And, oh, and I Matt love Bash LeBron and Roach. Boy, could he play. He was a real slasher. He was. He was a tough runner. You go way back to Ryan Roberts. He was more uh -huh, of a yes. spot little wrestler type. Yep, he was a scat back. He was tough. Witt being chased, throws the ball. Oh, almost intercepted. Oh, tipped back in bounds. Oh, my God. Whew. He did it. He <laughs> did what? <laughs> Did you see what? that? The defensive back leapt yep. up in the air, tipped it back like a volleyball set. Wow. And his teammate ran it back deep into Monroe territory. That play was actually. Um, Can we see a replay? Yep. Wow. That was a Sports Center top 10 play. That there. was unbelievable. What a heads up play. I don't know who that was. That was Isaac Stinson that was tipped it? that I wanted back to guess Stinson. To, uh, T. Santiago. But didn't he look like a like a volleyball that, Yes, and I've seen that happen a couple times. It actually happened in college football earlier this year, and it was on, I saw it on SportsCenter Top 10. That was that play exactly. Isaac um, must be watching the same show as you are. He, oh, now the referees are discussing it out in the field. Oh, that would be too bad if they take this away. Who do you give credit to the interception to? The, probably you give the guy that, that to, caught it. You give it to the guy that caught it. So that would be an interception there for Santiago. Now, I believe that's his second of the season as he returned one in the game against Baraboo. Referees huddled about the 35-yard line to discuss this. Oh, come on, replay gods. Let's see it again. Now, for our listeners who maybe aren't able to see what happened there, Stinson just jumped right on the sideline, and as he was falling, he threw it right back in. Yep. They're giving it the ball to the MG, so an interception for the defense. First and ten, Silver Eagles. That was an unbelievable play. I've never seen anything like that. That was, that was incredible. I was about to say, as he was falling out of bounds, I was about to say, you know, great interception there by Stinson, but he, he went out of bounds. Right, but right, right before he hit the ground, he threw it back in. So for those of you who watch it on YouTube, tune in tomorrow afternoon when this one's airing again. You'll be able to watch this. I want to see that one. That was spectacular. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody tries to submit that in the sports center. That was yeah. a pretty special play there. Well, they spot the ball at the 33-yard line of Monroe. The Silver Eagles with 4.39 to play have a chance to go up by that 35-point margin. Wow. <laughs> I got to see that one again. That was pretty cool. That might be the play of the season. All right, I didn't catch who was in there with Bishop this time. That's okay, he's going to throw it. Over the middle. Touchdown. Got him in, touchdown. Is that Spalding? Spalding. Peyton Spalding there with the touchdown. From 33 yards out, just like that they strike, and it's a 41-7 to lead. Again, right. that was a very similar play to that last touchdown that they had thrown the, the previous drive to Reuter. Great play fake. Wide open down that seam. Spalding has been a good possession receiver, but that time got himself wide open and had an easy trot into the end zone. And Bishop put the ball right in yep. there, too. Oh, it's great to see Jordan Bishop starting to really gain some confidence here as the, as the season moves forward. And, and knowing that, you know, as it goes forward here into the playoffs and, and, and beyond, 
having a threatening running and passing game, it's it's going to be fun to watch this offense as it really starts to come alive. It's starting to look like last year's offense. Yep, there's Spalding going into the end zone. 42 to nothing as Houston's kick is good. When you have to help me here, Steve, but how many different guys have touchdowns tonight? It's Let's at least see. four. Hep, Killer Lane, uh, Reuter, and Spalding yep. now. So what is that, four? Yep. Well, that's great. That's what you really want to see, to be able to have all those different weapons on offense when you're not even using a like, guy like Jalen Ostrowski on offense right now. Right, right. You're, yeah, your best running back is, well, I don't know if I've even seen him on defense. We'll have to look. I haven't paid much attention. Yeah. Jalen Ostrowski was considered one of the best defensive backs in the state before the season started and has hardly played back there this year. Now the Silver Eagles will kick off yet again with 4.32 to play in the first half and a 42-7 lead. You know, I figured we would win this game by a fairly healthy margin, but I didn't expect 42 points in the first half. Yeah, I mean, as, as far as I have seen this year, I think this is the, the best offensive performance I've seen already so far. Very different performance than last week against Fort Atkinson, but this looks, again, like I was saying earlier, this is starting to look like last year and the year before that yeah, yeah. offense. This is a team that is really starting to click. The first couple games you could see they were off just a, just a little bit. You know, things were close to this, but couldn't quite do it. And now last week and this week they have really put it together and, and uh, they're causing some damage. And granted, they're playing a couple of weak teams last week and this week, but... This, is, this type of play is going to win you games against anybody. Yep. Houston, the kick, taken inside the 10, 15, 20-yard line, 25, and out to the 30 again. So one thing Monroe doing well, averaging about 20 yards on a, each kickoff return. Houston getting some nice kicks, but the coverage not exactly there. 404, 403 and counting to play here in the first half. Monroe with another possession, trying to cut into that 42 to seven lead. Witt calling the signals. Give it to his running back who fought for three or four yards. Hey David, can we turn the overhead light on? Thank you, oh, much wow. better. This is like a whole new world in Yeah, here. <laughs> wow. I can see, Ma, I can see. All right. Second and six for the Cheesemakers. Give it to the running back. He goes into the line for a couple of yards. Ethan Boehner called for the tackle. Third and three now. This is one of those situations where if they make it, they can you know, maybe gain a little confidence going into the second half. But, boy, if they don't, they're in trouble because there's just under well, three minutes to play. Yeah, I was just going to say there, Steve, not only if, if you don't get this here, you're giving the ball back to Manon the Grove, who's shown they can score quickly. Yeah, on any given play, it seems like tonight. Watley with the handoff, and Watley, he's going to be short of the first down. I think that was Montgomery on the, on the carry there. Oh, you're right. While he was going out the other way. Other thing. Well, I do expect him in row to go for it here. And if, man, like, oh, okay, they're going to oh, move the change, Oh, they gave the first actually, down. Yeah. They reconsidered the ball at the 44-yard line of Monroe. Well, like we were just saying there, if nothing else, you just got that Monroe defense is breathing the biggest sigh of relief that they don't have to go back onto yeah. the field and, and face that Monona Grove offense again. They're gonna be getting tired chasing the MG kids around the field. Yeah, so that's one that's one hard thing that if you're not able to, to move the ball on offense, your defense is gonna be on the field a, a lot. Well, Witt looking to throw, pressure coming now, loops one up to the left side, high ball, almost yeah. picked off, yeah, flags there was all over some the interference place. There. That'll be called on Stinson, I believe. That was tough. You know, when you get those balls that are under throw and your receivers are going to have to try to fight back to the ball, and, and Stinson did kind of bump them. Yeah, the ball thrown high enough that everybody just kind of looped around underneath yep. it. I'm a little late, but this is, you're listening to WVMO LP Monona. Good thing Lindsey Wood Davis is retired. He used to call me up and chew me out for not doing the station ID. <laughs> and I deserved it. I was learning. 
42 to seven with a minute 15 to play in the first half. Silver Eagles with a comfortable lead, but trying to hold off this Monroe charge. In the waning moments of the first half. Monroe will get the ball to start the second half. Hand off to 32 Montgomery. Montgomery hit at the line and dropped. Santiago there with a the nice hit. Montgomery's taking a good beating. Ooh, at halftime, Oregon beating Stoughton 21 to three. Wow. Stoughton's got a good kicker. He's made several field goals, but 21 to three surprises me. Looks like Stoughton's having some problems with turnovers. Stoughton in the first half with a fumble and an interception and the missed field goal. All right, second and 10 for the Cheesemakers. Montgomery getting the handoff. Gained a couple yards there before he's brought down. It's going to bring up third and long. It really handicaps you when you don't have a team that can throw the ball very well. It, it really does, and we were talking about that earlier. You're able to load up guys into the box, and, and they just don't have to respect your downfield passing game. No, because you watch. You know, they've got nine guys in the box right now. Yep. And we got a timeout call. Nope, nope that's it. the end of the first half. The Silver Eagles go to the locker room leading over the Monroe Cheesemakers, 42-7. to seven. Stay tuned to watch the, the second half programming. We'll be back. I'm Steve Martinelli alongside Max Etheridge, bringing you Silver Eagle football here on WVMO. MG up 42-7 to seven over the Monroe Cheesemakers. Stick around for some more entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, here they come, the Monroe Grove. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Hey! All right, you can hear it? Ladies and gentlemen, the 92-member Monona Grove School Wearing Band is under the direction of Tyra Mellon and Jeff Hill. 
It all begins as soon as the weather allows it in early spring. It, it starts with getting ready for the season, fertilizing it, overseeding it when the ground temperature is ready. And then over the season, maintaining it watered, mowed, aerated, fertilized, measuring out the lines, the fields, and then painting it. It averages from 45 minutes to mow it to a couple hours, depending on what the job is, whether it's seeding, fertilizing. The weather will throw your plan off, whether it's rain or it's too hot, too dry to be on it. Or in the winter time when it's too cold and the grass won't grow or recover from active play. Every day you learn something new, every season you learn something new. Whether it's the internet or reaching out to other local groundskeepers. I, I take a lot of pride in what I do and the most important thing is to have a, a good looking field but most importantly a safe field for the coaches, the players, and then it gives them a lot of pride too when you have a good looking quality field. Okay. Welcome back to Monona Hike Grove High School as the Silver Eagles take a 42 to 7 halftime lead over the Monroe Cheesemakers. I'm Steve Martinelli alongside Max Etheridge subbing for Bob Schmuck. Max, pretty dominating performance by the offense this first half. Yeah, that was a great, great half of football for Monona Grove and definitely what you wanted to see is, you know, we haven't really yet seen that offense come alive like that yet this season. You know, we knew the defense was there, but to be able to see the offense be able to effectively run the ball with Killer Lane and then also to be able to throw the ball um, with Bishop to many different targets, uh, that's what you definitely want to see from Monona Grove. What's impressive is they're doing this without starting running back Jalen Ostrowski on the offensive side of the ball giving him a breather tonight. Uh, they started Killer Lane. Um, trying to think who else. Shane, Shane Duncan, Duncan got some carries. And, uh, Ethan, Ethan Bainer, Bainer got a couple. Yeah. Let me run down the scoring for you. To open up the game after the opening kickoff, first play of from scrimmage, Jordan Bishop throws a 57-yard touchdown bomb to Sam Hepp to open the scoring. They came back later about four minutes afterwards with Brady Killer Lane, a five-yard run. And then to close out the first quarter, another pass to Hepp. This one only 16 yards. Bishop with two scores two touchdown passes in the first half, or first quarter. Uh, to start the second quarter though, Monroe came out strong. Jordan Montgomery, a three yard run with at the eight minute mark of the first half. The Silver Eagles came back strong after that. The first play after the kickoff, Brady Killerling went 50 yards for the touchdown for his second score of the night. Then with five and a half minutes to play in the first half, Reuter took a 16 yard pass for Bishop, Bishop's third touchdown pass of the night. And then Bishop throws another one right before the end of the fourth quarter to P.J. Spaulding for 33 yards. Oliver Houston good on all five, all six extra points. Four Silver Eagles scoring. Um, it's 42 to seven. The Silver Eagles really clicking. They've had uh, two takeaways, three takeaways so far. Yeah, I mean, they're really hitting on pretty much all cylinders here. I would expect to see, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the starters come out here in the first half just to open things up. Um, I'd, I'd love to see backup quarterback Cam Benke yeah, again. Well, and something that, you might see is, is Banky come in with some of those first team linemen, some of those first team receivers to get him some action, you know, just in case they do need him, you know, um, ever in case of injury or something for Bishop, you know, going with those first teamers. Well, Max, let's talk a little bit about the team you played on, the 2013 state champs coming up. Well, this would be the fifth five year anniversary it of that is. championship. Yeah, I know. I, I can't believe it. It honestly feels Time like flies, doesn't so, it? I remember yep. standing in Camp Randall, how sunny it was and how cold it was that day. I remember waking up that morning and looking outside, and there was snow on the ground. And when we first got to Camp Randall, because we were that early game. You know, That's right. It was a 10 o'clock start. Yeah, yeah. So we, you know, we, everything moved pretty early in the morning. I mean, I remember we were at the high school for breakfast um, probably by 6 in the morning. I mean, it was an early morning for us, and I remember getting to Camp Randall and getting on the field right away. And um, the ground, that turf was all like icy and oh, I snowy. Imagine it had so some it was a, I mean, that was a fun, fun kind of atmosphere to be able to play in that with it, you know, being snowy. Now that team had two, two outstanding players running back, just a sophomore at the time, Torin Young, 
And then quarterback Tyler Blang, who is a phenomenal athlete, and regardless of the sport he was playing in. But you had told me that there's somebody else who was a real team leader in that bunch. Yeah, you know, yeah, Brock Offidall was definitely, you know, one of the emotional, you know, leaders of the team. And, um, you know, we kind of went as, as Brock went. Um, you know, he was a super high-energy guy. And, sure. Um, you know, the most, he, he was the most instinctual player I've ever I've ever seen, you know. I, I, I can't tell you if he, you know, you know, scheme-wise, if he always, you know, he was somebody that probably freelanced more than he should have, but he, but he had the instincts to do it. I mean, the coaches trusted him that he was, you know, more times than not, he was going to make the right football play, and he was just, you know, when you talk about those, you know, tough, hard-nosed guys, um, that was Brock. You're just a, just a football player, not necessarily a running back or a linebacker. He was a football player. Yep. Put him out there anywhere, and he'd give his all. That's kind of fun to see. Now, I interviewed a lot of the guys on the 77 state championship team. I'll ask you some of the same questions I asked them. Who was the toughest guy on the team? If you were going into a fight, who did you want with you? You know, it, it, it might. You know, if we're, if, we're, if we're on the football field, it's, you know, Brock Offidal is definitely up there. Okay. Um, you know, we had some other just tough guys that, you know, Nick Tan was a super tough guy that, oh, yeah. um, you know, kind of was a, a backup at certain positions, but... Nick was was very tough. Um, obviously, Torin was tough, and Jake Decor was another tough guy on that team. I mean, and that was that was kind of our our that had to be our thing that year. Is we just had a lot of tough guys. Uh -huh. You know, it we weren't. I mean, Coach Stats said this the whole the whole way when we were you know making our run, and we kind of knew it too. I mean, we there certainly have been more talented teams to come through Monona Grove, and then we knew that. But but we we acknowledged that, and we just we would out tough opponents. Well, this was a team that played probably the finest game that I'd ever seen. The most exciting game probably was that state championship game when you were down 17 to nothing at halftime to Greendale and came back to score 21 unanswered points. That was just phenomenal, the way the team didn't give up. They kept pushing. They had some great outstanding plays, the running, the blocking, the defense. Um, I have to ask you, did you get on the field in that game? I did. I did Good actually. I did get on. Um I did get on the field on kickoff for that game, and I so that was fun. I imagine just playing in a game like that is a highlight in your life. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, you grow up, you know, I, you know, my, we had season tickets in our family for Badger football games, so, you know, I had been going to Badger games since I was just a little kid, and, you know, yeah, obviously getting on the field there, and that's just, I mean, I, I'm serious. I mean, that, you know, everyone's in high school has that goal of getting to Camp Randall, but, but truly that season, I, that was not something that was, necessarily in our sights the whole season. I mean, we were trying to win conference, um, and, and we knew even that year it was going to be tough, but, um, you know, to actually get to Camp Randall was pretty crazy. All right, Houston's kick to start the second half, taken at the 15-yard line across the 30 again. They're getting a decent return each time, only about to the 30 this time, I guess, but still a good 20-plus yards where the cheesemakers will take over, first and 10. Monona Grove defense back out on the field. We'll see if we can pick off some of the substitutes that are out there as they come in. Tucker Merrill out there. I don't remember seeing him in the first half. Trey Loken is out there as well. Um, so it does look like a mix of first and second teamers. I do still see Gronsky. I see Hyannis out there. I do see Samaj out there. Witt calling the signals. Going back to pass and brought down, sacked back by the 20 yard line. Who was that, Gronsky? No, Camden Sisler, I believe. Sisler, I think that's his first sack of the year. About a nine, 10 yard loss. Ooh, they might say second and 21. That was a big play to push him back that far. Witt well, just kept fading back. And yeah, back. and that looked kind of like one of those naked bootlegs. Where he was rolling back out there, and he wasn't going to have any extra blockers out there. You just have to hope that you fall for that play fake and you're able to get out there. Sisler, the right side defensive end. Second down, they run it into the line. Nothing much there. They really haven't gotten a lot of offense going. They've been shut down like Fort Atkinson was last week, but they're not making much for yardage on any significant play. They had that one long run, but that's about all they did. Yep, yeah, it's been pretty slow moving here for Monroe, and, and that's, I mean, that's going to be their game where they are going to try to establish that run, and, and you just got it for Monroe. You have to hope you bust a couple right. runs, but well, this bless, front seven has been tough. Bless the WIAA and the running clock rule is we're up by 35 points. Looking to throw, tipped, 
and almost picked off. Oh, off the had fingertips. A, yep, Boehner had a chance there, and then Herber had the chance off the tip. They both had a chance to pick that. That'll bring up third, fourth and long, fourth and 17. They're going to have to kick it away, so Spaldi and Reuter will drop back. Cam Reuter with that one touchdown reception. Spaulding has one as well. Four touchdown passes for Bishop tonight. I'm going to enjoy seeing his stats. And now we've got a flag coming in. What do we got? Maybe too many players. Yep, too many Silver Eagles on the field. That doesn't happen much. Tucker Merrill trot off. All right, I thought it looked like we were playing extra guys on defense. They're yeah, attacking it, it, really well. Yeah, and you're going to see that, uh, you know, anytime you get a mix of those first and second teams out there, it does kind of become tough who's actually supposed to be out on the field. So fourth and 12 instead. They're still going to punt it. Reuter and Spaulding standing back at the MG 40-yard line. Hernandez with the kick. Low kick, Spaulding will let it bounce in front of him. It'll bounce back towards the 50 and almost directly in front of us on the MG side of the 50-yard line, first and 10 Silver Eagles. So be good, good starting field position here for MG. MG's had good position starting almost every drive except that one where they were back on the one-yard line. I think they've been out near the 50 or better almost every time. Yep. All right, the MG offense will take over. Thank you. Cam Banky out there leading the offense with Shane Duncan. Oh, that would be nice to see Banky and Duncan on. For and most it does of the half. It, it does appear that most of the second team offense is out and there. We've got I, I 32 don't see. out there. Owen Crow, a sophomore, one wide receiver. We'll try and pick up some of the other names. Banky's shown a little arm in the few throws he's had. It's Duncan gets the carry and he plows across the 50. Yeah, I mean, although we are up 35 and, and, and you do have the second teamers out there, I, I would still expect to see the coaching staff let Banky, you know, make a couple throws here. Um, I'm certainly not going to be airing it out, but he'll make a couple throws here in the second half. Trevor Odgen, the wide receiver closest to us. Banky calling the signals. They give it to Duncan again, coming right side. No, Banky on the keeper. And we got a flag in the offensive backfield. Banky still on his feet, getting down near the 45-yard line of Monroe, but this will probably come back. The flag was in the vicinity of one of our backup lineman, Christian Schlick, 5'11", 274-pound lineman. Another yeah. sophomore. Yeah, they are going to call us for a hold there. Anytime you get, you know, Banky was, was dancing a little bit back there in reverse field a couple times. Anytime you get that, um, you, you are more likely to have one of your linemen hold. So they march it back 10 yards from the spot. That'll put it back to the MG 45 yard line. Second and 19. See if Cam throws on this down. Changing the play now, all heads turn. <laughs> like a bunch of prairie dogs at the zoo. Now they're focused in. Binky, he drops it straight back, now rolling to his right. He's going to have to it, does, gets it downfield. Caught! That's who? Owen Croak on the catch there. 32, Croak, the sophomore. So, Banky, the sophomore, throwing to Croak, the sophomore, and a first down. Great play, extending it with his legs there. And if you saw Banky, once he broke outside the pocket, he started leading his receiver. He pointed you know, towards him to get downfield, to get, find that little opening to, to put in his nice throw there right in his hands. Banky listed at 5'11", a little short for a quarterback, but he's got a nice arm. He's made some good throws, and that was another beauty. Right in the hands of Owen Croke. They give it to Duncan again, trying to go off the right tackle. There's a flag coming in late. I don't know if we're going to get a hold or a face mask. Yeah, I think that is going to be a hold, unfortunately. Yep. Yep, against the Silver Eagles. So a couple penalties against the junior varsity. 
You know, they got backups in there, but there's a couple good-sized linemen on the, and the I G do, side I, of the ball. I do see that. M Michael Williams Davis is one that's still out there. Okay. Um, and and I, I got to imagine that's by design, you know, having been out the last few weeks due to injury. Let's um, see. Trying to get some reps here. Gothard, one of the starters, is out there. So they're maybe replacing a few of these linemen who are having problems uh, hold, not holding the cheesemakers. Second or first and long again. Duncan. Duncan's going to score. He's gone. Duncan will go 42 yards for the touchdown. Wow, was that fast. He shot through that line in, like nothing. So, with 4.43 to play in the third quarter, Silver Eagles attack another one on, this time by Shane Duncan. And again, there you have another Monona Grove player getting into the end zone. So that's now, what, five tonight? Five tonight. So getting you counting see. for seven scores. And we've had three touchdowns of 42 yards or longer. Houston with his seventh extra point attempt. Spalding with the hold, the kick. It is blocked. Oh, yeah. Houston, we have a problem. You don't know how long I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> All right, well, 48 to seven is still good. Houston got the kickoff a little too low, and and uh, and uh, so he was up 48 to seven. So interesting, a couple penalties called on the backup lineman, made some changes, and almost immediately Duncan goes 42 yards for the touchdown run, the fifth Silver Eagle to get into the end zone tonight. Forty-eight to seven. Yeah, it's going to move pretty quick here and now. Once you get that running clock, I mean, if you think about it, we're already. <laughs> yeah, we're four forty-three to go in the third quarter. The third quarter is almost. The clock over. wouldn't have stopped if not for the touchdown. Yep. That darn Shane Duncan. <laughs> he really shot through the line, though. Well, yeah, and, and what was surprising there is, you know, he shot through the line, which, you know, in this offense isn't too surprising. But again, you just—I I was waiting for a Monroe player to come over and tackle. Right, him. There was just right. nobody there. And he kicked it into gear. He's quicker than I thought. Of course. Yep. He and Killer Lane have both shown some great speed. Yeah, look and see if Jalen's even in uniform tonight. You know, and he might not be. And again, you know, that, that may be completely by design. Sure. You know, I know that during our season, um, you know, we would do that if, you know, we had a... Wally taking it at the 10 for Monroe. Across the 20, Ooh. across the 30. 35-40, out of bounds near midfield, just a little short. Yeah, as I was saying, you know, uh, you know, especially during games that you might have, you know, you might be playing a slightly easier opponent, um, able to get some of those guys that that need to rest because when you really need them is is in the playoffs, especially for a guy like Jalen. I do anticipate you will see him on both sides of the ball come playoff time. Absolutely, he's a talented athlete. And they can use use him on either side. Although they don't really need him tonight. They've really done a good job. Yep. All right. Monroe will start the ball on their own 47-yard line. Good field position, but they trail it 48-7. to seven. First and 10 for the Cheesemakers. Hand off to Montgomery. Montgomery, who got the line of scrimmage and got hauled backwards. Montgomery looks like a good running back. Yeah. And you think with better blocking, he'd be good. You yeah. Know, he's and strong, that's he's fast. And that's really been the key that, that we were talking about earlier is just that that front seven from Monona Grove, he hasn't, he's rarely been able to get past that just first line of defense because um, he, he does look like he's pretty quick. Yeah, he actually lost about a half a yard on that play, second and 11. Hand off to Montgomery again, trying to go the right side, has the 50-yard line and Pushed out of bounds after he crossed the 50. Might have got to the 46, yes. That'll bring up third and about three. Another, another tough down for the cheesemakers. I 
Yeah, Monroe has shown some flashes here, but just not the same consistent push like the Silver Eagles get every time they get the ball. Mm -hmm. Witt calling the signals. They give it to Montgomery again. This time Montgomery has the first down as he's brought down near the 40-yard line. In the Monona Grove territory, the 40 might be their deepest penetration except for the one drive that they scored on. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that had to have been one of their longer runs of the night there. The ball just short of the 40, call it the 41, first and 10 for the Cheesemakers. 2.14 to play in the first half, or first half, third quarter. I missed who got the handoff. Fleckler there. there with the carry on that fullback, uh, that quick fullback dive. They've got some of the skill players, but there's a few bigger holes in their in their lineup that yeah. really are lacking. And not a not a big crowd here on the other side of the field to support them either. I imagine that's a long drive back it to Monroe is, after yeah. a thumping like this. Witt calling the signals still. Man in motion, gets the handoff. Is that Bansley? I think that is. That one 24. is Aiden Sweeney, it looked like. Oh, Sweeney. Yep. Minute 25 to play in the half. A quarter, jeez. <laughs> this is why you didn't want to do play-by-play, -play, right? <laughs> Maybe next week. When the Silver Eagles will travel to Milton to take on the Red Hawks. Milton is home of the world's largest culvers. Third and three for the Cheesemakers. To give right side. There goes Montgomery. Montgomery again has the first down. So Monroe threatening to get into double digits for the first time. Stay tuned, we're gonna have sidelines interviews at the end of the quarter. Another 32 seconds, actually. Get Anita ready. Get her warmed up. Has she been doing her vocal exercises? Nice tackle there. Oh, and a late flag coming yeah. in. That, uh, that happened in a defensive backfield between um, uh, Trey Loken and one of the Monroe players. I don't know who they're going to call it on, but there was definitely some extracurricular activity there. Like a school dance or a yeah. spelling bee? <laughs> yeah, they were dancing. Yeah, they are going to call Dan Trey Loken. Yep, they're going to call, and it's going to cost us a first down. No time left in the quarter, though, so the third quarter ends. The Silver Eagles up 48-7. to seven. So we'll flip-flop ends here and play the last 12 minutes. Silver Eagles looking pretty good thus far. 12 minutes left in this one, and it'll go fast. We're ready to throw it to the sidelines for our sideline reporter, Anita Angadet. Thanks, guys. I'm here with some seniors on the dance team. We have Hannah, Lila, Claire, and Presley. And um, you might have seen them in their wonderful performance at Halftime Show. I understand that you guys put a lot of work into these Halftime Shows. About how long do you spend on your routines? So we like to start in the summer and try and get as much as we can done. But when we do have back-to-back -back games like playoffs, we're learning the dance on Tuesday, drilling on Wednesday, and cleaning on Thursday, and it's ready by Friday. So a lot of the times we're really working hard to get that dance done in one week. That's amazing that you guys can do that all the week. I also know that you guys do a really great job with the um, signs when the football players introduce. They're all hand-drawn, and they're actually really cool. Um, how do you come up with the phrases, and how long do you guys spend on them? We usually make them in the summer, and we make all of them for the regular season, and we try and make them really punny and like related to the other team's mascot. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Back to you guys. Thanks, Anita. That was great. So I imagine there was some cheese-related pun to this yeah. week's sign. <laughs> all right. We're ready to start the fourth quarter now. We'll try and do more of those interviews as the season gets on. We're experimenting with some of the new toys we've got up here. All right, first and 10, no, second and five for the Cheesemakers after the penalty. The ball near the 20-yard line. Quarterback got knocked down, uh, Max Golombowski in there, a quarterback now, he's a sophomore. And I would have to guess that is probably the son of their head coach. 
can't imagine there's too many Golombuski no, families in the row. I got to imagine there is some relation there. The run getting the first down. So the cheesemakers down to the 15 yard line, first and 10. The fullback getting the handoff there, but he got pushed back. I don't know if he got the line of scrimmage even. I'm having trouble picking up numbers of some of these players here. <laughs> Two yard loss on the play, second and 12. The sophomore quarterback calling the signals. Nope. Almost from the snap there. Pitching it out to the left side. A short gain, but not much at all. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage prior to the penalty. It's going to bring up third and long. So nice to see Monroe substituting pretty freely. They don't have a whole lot of guys on their sidelines. I can count up how many they got on their roster, but it seems like there's yeah, fewer on the sidelines than there are a, on the roster. It is a smaller team, and I know that they are. You know, one of the lower enrollment teams, and, you know, as I'm sure you've heard in a couple of years, they're going to make, be making that transition, um, you know, away from Badger Conference. We're running kind of an option offense now that we hadn't seen but for a few plays in the first half. Golombioski, the quarterback, running that one pretty well, getting the pitch out there. and They didn't gain any yards to speak of, but they ran it well, and it brings up fourth and ten for the cheesemakers. Ten minutes to play in this one. 48 to seven, the Silver Eagles seem to have win number six locked up. I can even forgive them for giving up the one touchdown. <laughs> Golubuski up to the line, calling the signals. Man came out of his stance a little early. He rolls to his left throw, there's the flag, incomplete. The Silver Eagles will decline and get the ball turned over to them on downs. Monona Grove, first and 10 with the ball. Well, Max, have you enjoyed this? Are you willing to come yeah. down? Yeah, oh, for uh, sure. Come down to Milton. Okay, we're going to do another interview. Anita Angadet again on the sidelines. Anita, take it away. Guys, I'm here with the one and only Dr. Ross. Um, I know that you've had, uh, I know that you're here a lot and you see these All games right. a lot. What is your favorite thing about the student football? Uh, my favorite thing about football is we're highly successful on the field, but our kids, both our players and our fans, always conduct themselves with class. And so we win with class, and if we have a tough game, we lose. We do. And we tried to do that up here in the booth, too. Try though we might. All right, first and ten for the Silver Eagles. We get a good push up front, and now we get... I can't make out who's got the ball. A scrum moving to the right side. And that truly was a scrum there. We're down to 8.20 to play in the game. This is more like learning how to dance in middle school <laughs> than, than football sometimes. But the, the playing experience is invaluable. You don't get this type of experience scrimmaging in, in practice, that's for sure. Banky calling the signals. Hand off to the back, into the line, and he gets hit immediately and stood up. That'll bring up third and about 10 for the Silver Eagles. So let's see Benke throw another one. Kid's got a live arm. I would like to see that last week. He hit, yeah, Reuter on that nice uh, deep pass. Yeah, that was just a bullet, too. All right, we're going to go to Anita yet again. Anita, take it away. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. Maybe we're gonna get this playoff. Playoff? All right, uh, we're back with Dr. Brust. Um, again, your favorite memory from the 14 years of football that you've been doing. Uh, in year two or three when I was here, when we were in the playoffs, we had a team that beat three undefeated teams in a row to go to the state championship, and then we lost in a very close one to get second in state, but it's the best run I've ever seen in the playoffs in any football game. That's awesome. That's so great that you've been here for so long. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Anita. <laughs> All right, the Silver Eagles, fourth and 11, will have to punt. I think this is their first punt of the game. 
Looks like Trent Gothard is back there punting. We've got to have, uh, if he's punting here, that'll be one of the bigger uh, punters here in the conference, yeah. having your defensive lineman punt. He's listed at 6'2", 275. Really? There will be a timeout here from Monona Grove. Timeout with 6.28 to play, a 48-7 MG lead. Well, Sideline interviews, a new thing for us here at WVMO and Monona Community Media. Always new wrinkles. Last year was away games. That's been a lot of fun. This is, we covered all of the away games last year, and we've done them. Well, we, the station's covered them all. I missed one of them this year, but, but we've... Uh, Expanded our broadcast capabilities. We did basketball on the road some last year. That was fun, especially that playoff game up in Sun Prairie against against uh, Stoughton. Yeah. We did that boys and girls doubleheader down in McFarland. Yeah, yeah. That was a good time. And now we've even got uh, a promo, an intro for us done by my favorite WVMO DJ, Johnny Rasta. <laughs> you got to listen to this guy on Saturday mornings. He does a fantastic show. Back in the day, it's called. <laughs> a history of funky music. All right, now the punt coming up for the Silver Eagles. Yeah, he is a beefy punter, like a Reggie Roby-like. Nice kick brought up. Diving catch made by the res return man, 24, Nick Bans Banks. <laughs> I can't talk, Bansley. 6-10 to play and a running clock. Silver Eagle defense, backup defense out on the field again. I like the fact that Monroe's playing their backup players too. A lot of teams won't do that in, in a loss like this even. Yeah. Hey, the defensive end out on this side is number 19, Carter Tomzak. I think that's uh, Presley Mackesy, actually. Oh, you're right, you're right. All right, Tomzak's 18, I'm sorry. Mackesy's gotten into a few games. Hand off to the running back, into the line, and a short gain, a three-yard pickup. The stats, I think, are going to be a little deceiving. I think Monroe's you know, gained a few yards here and there, but the game really hasn't been as close as it's going to look statistically. I mean, this one was over pretty much in the first quarter. Yeah, and any time you have your your, your backups in for a, uh, an entire half, it's going to skew those stats a little right, bit. Right, right. I mean, really, from that first play to Sam Hep, yeah. we had them back on their heels. The handoff to the end coming around. Cross the 30-yard line. Bring up third and about, where are they spotting it? Oh, nice spot for them, third and three. The ball inside the 30 at the 29-yard line. I like the depth that the Silver Eagles have shown at various skill positions. You know, Reuter, Spalding, Hep, all great pass catchers. Uh, Dante McConley getting into that act. For sure, definitely showing a little bit more depth than uh, the last couple of years with some of those skill oh, positions. Oh, nice, nice push there. Who is that, 88? No, we don't have an 88. Good job stringing that play out, though, so he couldn't get around the corner. Loss of a, about a yard on the play brings up, what is, what down is it? Fourth and five. Monroe will go for it with just over four minutes to play. I can't hear you. The field mic. Just kind of loud in the field oh, mic. Oh, the field mic. I see. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> So next week we'll be on radio only in Milton. Be a little different. So, Milton getting the first down on that play. The clock continuing to run, 335. Any score updates? I'd be real curious to hear how Stoughton's doing against yeah, Oregon. Yeah, I'm checking right now, that actually. Would, that I'm was interesting. Right now. That's more interesting than this one has been in the second half as the Silver Eagles having the running clock, putting up the one score in the second half. Shane Duncan's 42-yard run. The Silver Eagles showing the big play capability tonight. Three 40-yard-plus three touchdowns. Three minutes and a little bit to go in this one. 
So a couple score update updates here. I do see Watertown is leading Milton 19 to six with 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Let me try to get a Stoughton update here. Stoughton is down uh, 10 to 21 to Oregon still here in the fourth quarter. So, so not looking good for Stoughton. Um, although I, I will say if they were to drop this one to Oregon with, with a win against Monona Grove in a couple of weeks, they would still you know, tie the conference. That's I think true. That, at that point it would be a three-way tie, I believe. That's true. I don't see that happening, though. Yeah, I, We're, we're kind of I putting it together yeah, yeah. this time of the season. The team's hitting their stride. 2.20 to play in the game. Third and one for the Cheesemakers. The ball on the MG 11-yard line. Yeah, that MG Stoughton game will definitely be interesting. You know, looking at especially this year, you know, having only four home games for Monona Grove, I know that Stoughton game is going to be for the conference um, on homecoming as well as senior night. Yeah, so. that'll be a big one for them then. Inside handoff. Should have enough for the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Cheesemakers. Minute 49, 48 and counting. See if they've got enough time to punch another one in. So Rigo substituting freely, getting a lot of experience for some of the backups. Minute and a half to play. First and goal from the six. Quarterback looking to throw. No, that's the wider or running back 24 going for the sidelines. That's, let's see, 24 Nick is Bans Nick Bansley. Yeah. So still keeping some of their starting running backs out there. Minute 10 to play, first and, or second and goal from the seven. Yeah, the second half moves quick. It's just crazy. The first half, you know, with all the stoppages, yeah. it, the first half takes an hour or two, and second half gets done in about 20-something minutes. Yeah, it goes pretty quick. That's good because Bob usually gets tired and cranky in the second <laughs> half. Now, first and goal, there must have been a penalty there. Yeah, they do march it in half the distance, so about from the three, four-yard line. It's first and goal for the Cheesemakers. This would be a big boost for their sophomores if they can punch one in here. Mm -hmm. Bansley in motion. The handoff to the fullback. He stopped short. No, a oh. touchdown. Did you catch the player's number on that? You know, I think it was uh, was Witt. I think it was Alex Witt, but he was lined up at, at fullback. Really? So who, who their starting quarter? So so they did switch it. So they got it. Yep, that was Alex Witt, who is their starting quarterback, but was in playing fullback. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> well, they give up a meaningless touchdown here in the waning seconds of the fourth quarter. Witt, interesting that they would give it to him. He's just a junior, so he'll get some more playing time last year. He got a little quarterbacking in last year as a sophomore. Yeah, I think that's him next to their quarterback now as they're going for two. The quarterback on the keeper going left side. And uh, Golombuski, the quarterback, runs it in for the two-pointer. Kind of an interesting ploy there. So 48 to 15. Oh, you know what that does, Max? That cuts it down to a 33-point game. All right. Well, it should just be a kickoff here, and you take a, you take a couple knees and uh, you're able to get out of here. And the Silver Eagles will get their sixth consecutive victory of the season. You know, it's about this time of the year I started thinking about the playoffs. Up until now, I wasn't so sure, but yep. now I'm starting to have some real faith in this team. No, you definitely do start looking forward to the playoffs a little bit, and, you know, it's always interesting to see, you know, at this point, Monona Grove is definitely... Um, you know, enrollment-wise, establish themselves as a Division II program. Um, but it's always interesting to see what region we get put in. You know, obviously in the past, there's been a long history of, of us facing off against Wanakee, um, you know, in the level two or three playoffs. Yeah. But you look at last year, we actually got thrown in, you know, with, uh, you know, like walk, you know. Heartland? And yeah, well, we got thrown in, you know, we, recently we've been playing Wilmot Union and, right. and Waterford and, uh, you know, Waukesha West and Homestead and, you know, right. we get thrown out more towards Milwaukee, um, which, you know, can be a good and bad thing. I think, you know, a lot of times these coaches don't mind, you know, going to play some different schools that, that don't know, 
you know, as much about Monona Grove and, um, you know, we're able to really, up, you know, put herself out there against some really top programs. You know, obviously there's some very good Division II programs in that Waukesha area. Back to return the kick for the Silver Eagles. Number four, Trey Locken, and I believe that's number 13, Hunter Myers. Not expecting Hernandez to try and kick this one deep. All right, 47 seconds left in this one, so like Max said, they'll kick it and probably take a knee. Plenty of timeouts, but no reason to call them. Not in a 48 to 15 game. Hernandez ready to kick. Let's get this one over, guys. Yep. Whoa, my God, I've oh, never seen cow. something like that before. Bounced off one of the Silver Eagles and well, back, yeah, to the, can't. back to the Monroe squad. <laughs> I mean, wow. I, I, he was not trying to do that. Obviously. No, there's no that way. That was, you know, for, for people listening. Um, it hit they, the MG player and they, hit, they kicked it, and it hit right off one of our players in the front rows. It might have hit off his, his helmet. The way it bounced It, that it just far. hit right off him and bounced probably 20, almost 30 yards yeah, back backwards. To, back to the 35-yard line and, of Monroe. And Monroe will take over that. I mean, there's been a couple things this game I don't know if I, I've ever seen before. I've never seen a bounce like that off a player. <laughs> I mean, you see it bounce a yard or two off a guy. That, you yeah, know, when that they're doing an intentional flying. onside kick, he kicked a line drive into an MG player. No. They throw a deep tip. Oh. And knocked away. Silver Eagles almost intercepting. But that runs out the clock, and Silver Eagles go to 6-0, 48-15 over the Monroe Cheesemakers. Max, this has been a treat, and I hope you come back it and has, go yeah. down to Milton next I, week. I definitely look forward to it, and it, sh it should be another you know, good test against Milton next week. You know, I, I, I think it will be a little bit more of a test than these last couple games. You know, looking at Milton go now, um, you know, looking at 2-4 and four will we, be the record going into next yeah, week we've most got, likely. We've got Milton, Stoughton, and Watertown to end, so it'll be a good test for, to warm up for the playoffs. Yep. But this was a good victory tonight. A bunch of different players getting into action and scoring. Jordan Bishop, though, with four touchdown passes, he did a great game. Yeah, that, and that's going to be the big takeaway. You know, it's not the, just that we put up 48 points, but it's it's how we did it. Absolutely, you know, being able to to attack through the air as well as establish a great run game with you know Brady Killerlane looked re really good tonight, and um, you know obviously Cam Bishop Reuter. through the air, yes, for sure, yeah. and and going to Hep early as well, getting him involved. I mean, we there are a lot of weapons on this team. Um, and knowing that we are doing it right now without probably the biggest weapon on our team, without Ostrowski on offense, that's uh, it could be a very special ending here uh, as we kind of move forward. <laughs> Retro outfit night tonight, obviously. We're going to go to Anita once more on the sidelines. Anita, take it. News, um, Christian and Jensen. I'm just going to ask you guys a few questions about the game. Um, my first question is, how often are you coming out to these games? Um, I'm here every game. I think it's so important to support the seniors and other players. And um, I think it's important to encourage the freshmen to come out and dress up. That's awesome. I can see that it's 80s themed. I, I love your outfit. Um, my next question is, what's your favorite part about these Friday night games? It's definitely got to be the community. You know, we go out there, we put those cheers. We got some real cool school spirit going on. It's pretty great. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for a great game. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Anita. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Max and I will be back next Friday night when we travel down to Milton as the Silver Eagles take on the Milton Red Hawks as they continue their path to the playoffs. This has been Silver Eagle Football on WVMO Monona. Thank you. This broadcast is brought to you by Hometown News Group and the Herald Independent, a production of Monona Community Media a partnership between the Monona Grove School District and the City of Monona. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going on to youtube.com, searching Monona Community Media, selecting our channel, and clicking subscribe. And listen to us on the radio at 98.7 WVMO, the voice of Monona, online at mymonona.com.